Hey kids, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video on the channel. Greatly appreciate it. Today I'm taking a look at a Colt product. And believe it or not, the only Colt I've ever owned is my little 25 automatic, that little pocket pistol. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a look at a Colt that has reverberated through time. This one came from Liberty Arms. I'm borrowing it for the video. It will be available for sale by the time this goes up, if it isn't already gone. Inside this beautiful little hard case, you have a Colt 1911 government model Mark IV Series 70. So this is like page one, chapter one of the 1911 handbook. Let's go ahead and pull it out, drop the mag, and make sure she's clear. There you go. So this is an ARC typical 1911 a1. Now there was an original version. I don't have one of those here. This is the slightly more revised version, but still a very beautiful pistol. This one comes in at just under $1,000. Colts tend to command a higher price. They do look really nice. Is it worth that? You'll have to judge for yourself when we're done with the video. Finished in a brushed and kind of a shot peened look to it. I think this look is very nice. I've seen it on a lot of guns. Colt does it very well though. Has traditional style wood grips and all the features on this gun are very much original A1 style. For a comparison today, you will be seeing me use this, my Kimber Arctic Lightweight, because it's got a lot of features on it that we expect in modern day for a 1911, and it shows just how different a 1911 can be from one manufacturer to the next. So we'll be looking at that in partial comparisons. Obviously, show that mine is clear. Finished in 45 ACP, as it was originally intended by John Moses Browning for the military contract that Colt eventually won. Has a flat mainspring housing because it's based on the A1. Has the slightly flared finger grooves for the trigger guard, which helps smaller hands get a good grip on it. Traditional style beaver tail. It's not really beaver tail. This is just a grip safety. Spurred hammer short trigger, which... I really like, has a regular sized manual safety, standard slide lock slide release, and a checkered mag release that is in the standard height. Just has vertical rear slide serrations, which is what Colts originally had, and it, as you can see here, it has your Colt automatic caliber 45 government model, very standard trades on there. As you can see, Hartford, Connecticut. I like these guns. Bushing front, has a polished barrel and a half-length guide rod. Very standard GI sights on this one. Not much you can do about that. This one came with three mags. One is an original Colt. The other two are aftermarket. We'll go ahead and slide that out of the way. And I'm going to show you a direct comparison real quick. On my Kimber, a lot of the things that have been upgraded, for example, this one has front and rear slide serration, has fiber optic front with low snag rear sights, has an actual beaver tail which comes up and covers the back of the commander hammer, checkered rear main spring housing, this one has grip tape on the front, an adjustable trigger that's set up like a short trigger, much bigger external manual safety, mine has a magwell and some G10 grips, and as you can see, the mag release is higher on my gun. So that's a basic list of most of the upgrades. However, a lot of the functions like this cut here is still the same. The trigger guard looks the same. You will see that a newer 1911 will a lot of times have a flared ejection port, whereas this original pattern, Model 70, you can see it is just your straight cut down. Is one better at ejection than the other? Hard to say but there are reasons why guns are made differently by different manufacturers. They feel they can make it better than others. However, OG, OG right there, has a short trigger in it. If you hear somebody say short trigger, long trigger, that doesn't refer to the pull. It actually, re well, kind of does because a short trigger is a shorter pull, but it also refers to the length of the trigger. You can see how much longer or further in this trigger is than this one. This is a long trigger, but it's adjusted to work like a short trigger. This is just a short trigger. Single action only, obviously, with the external manual safety, and it is a very nice safety indeed. You can hear really nice metallic little thunk when it engages. 
and disengages. Spur hammer, very, very usable. Uh, commander size or commander style skeletonized, that's just a modern trend. The trigger feel itself, very little take up. It's non adjustable, so that little bit of take up. And then four and a half, maybe pounds. I think it's closer to four. But it has a very nice trigger, much better than my Rock Island with its fully adjustable trigger had. Very nice. The sights are pretty much just standard GI, and they suck. The rears are dovetailed, so you can change those out, but the front are not, so a gunsmith would be required to change that out. I would have them cut a dovetail in, that way you could run a more modern sight picture. I know, blasphemy, but you could at least put like some Trigicon night sights on it, which still look like black blade, and it wouldn't look so out of place. Has the... Half-length guide rod and the exposed dust cover. My Rock Island TAC-2 Ultra has a full-length dust cover. Some people only like this style. I'm a proponent of both, to be honest with you. Magazine release. Fully functional, even though it's a little bit small for my taste. And the magazines are drop-free. And original Colt mags do work with newer guns. As you can see, it goes right in. I have a flared magwell on this one, so it makes it a little more difficult to install flat base pads, but works just as well. Reset on the trigger is pretty decent. It's basically just back out to the wall, and it breaks again. You could definitely do some work with that. And you can hear a metallic thunk when you pull the trigger on this one. That just sounds good. You know what I mean? Sounds old school. You hear that? <laughs> Beautiful. So, what do you say we take her apart? Well, that works for me. That works for me. Boy, I love English. Double check, make sure it's empty. Five seconds can save you a lot of headaches. And then we're going to go ahead and lock the slide with the safety. And then we're going to come up front. Being a nicer manufactured gun, I should be able to, and I can, push down on the plunger with your finger, and then you slide your bushing out of the way. Be careful, these like to take flight. Guide rod is stuck with the spring, which is fine. Just go ahead and slide the bushing back over. Don't forget to do this. Disassembly is much easier when you do it the right way, but drop your safety, bring your slide back to the disassembly notch, which is this one here. There you go. And I will point out before I take it apart, this gun already had the idiot marks on it from the previous owner. And very easy to get those, especially on a stainless or polished gun. Please don't ever do that to your gun because it makes you look, well, like a bad Colt dad. I like to flip them upside down when they have half-length guide rods just because sometimes they'll fall out of the gun. Barrel, typical. Go ahead and drop that down, slide it out the front, and you have your bushings there, or excuse me, your locking lugs, truncated ramp, because you don't need a ramp for 45 ACP, it's the magazine that feeds it. I know, don't flame it in the comments, but that's basically how it works, and very nice lands and grooves inside of the barrel. Very nice. Looking at the internals here, you can see how nicely polished out it is in there. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration up there. That could be from heat. It could also be just the way it was finished at the factory. Being a Series 70, it has no... Uh, sorry, this gun is very dry and it threw me off there for a second. This has no drop safety in it, which is the way 1911 sh should be. I will be putting a couple of drops of lube on this when we reassemble it because oh, I'm amazed at how smooth it is, even though it's just dry. Sorry. Looking at the frame, has the fully cut slide rails there. Not all 1911s look like this. Some 1911s have the full rail that causes it to have a hole there. This was an area where some 1911s can crack, so Colt actually opened that up on purpose, <coughs> pardon me, in order to prevent the crack from happening in the first place. If there's no material, it can't break. Very nice finishing inside. And again, this thing is super smooth, even though it's super dry. Wow, 
Wowzers. Let's go ahead and reassemble it, but I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of drops of my favorite gun lube on there. And I'm not sponsored by them, but I like Wilson Combat stuff. I like their mags. I like their lube. This is just light oil, so if you're going to be doing springs and anything like that, you probably want to use their heavy oil or even their gun grease. But I just put a little bit in my rails. A little bit of extra lube doesn't hurt as long as you're not getting it like in the firing pin tube and in all the channels. Let's set that up because couch doesn't need to get oil on it. A little bit down here in my frame rails. Just a few drops will do. You can see there's just a few drops in there. It's not like it's saturated. I have on some guns just for the break-in period though. Go ahead and take your barrel. Flip it upside down. Drop your link so that you can get it back in there. I like to put a little drop of oil right here on the link. Just one drop will do you. Move that around. Take your guide rod. I also like to put a little drop of oil right there. There you go. Anything you can do to smooth out the gun is going to help it in the long run. Long run gun. I'm so funny. I'm so funny. Ha 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 ha. And I made the mistake of not putting the bushing in first. Sometimes that can be a little bit annoying because you have to squeeze it through the spring in order to slide it back over. Not a big deal. Just a little annoying sometimes, but we got there in the end. This is how I like to reassemble it. Make sure the link is in the down position. Hold it like that and start it on the slide. Oh yeah, even with just that little bit of oil, it feels better already. You want to make sure that the drop link goes in and you can see through where the slide lock slide release goes. Put your slide lock slide release in like that. Don't give yourself an extra idiot mark. I like to run it back. Make sure the barrel locks into position. Bring it back to the assembly spot, which again is this rearward notch in the slide. Lift up on your slide lock slide release and set down right when you get it into position. See? Then you don't have to add an idiot mark. Bring it back forward, lock it into position. Take your bushing very carefully because this is under a lot of tension. It's only like a 14 pound spring, but it can send these things flying into your ceiling tiles. I've shown on live stream what happens there. Then go ahead and rack it a little bit. It's even smoother. It's amazing what a little bit of lube will do you. Previous owner of this gun obviously shot it a bit and then traded it in. Probably only lubed it once if at all, but now the gun is ready to go. Function test it, and yeah, baby, we are back in function. What do I think of the Colt Model 70? Is it worth a thousand dollars? If you like a 1911 and you like a quality 1911, I'd say yes. If you're looking for a cheap 1911, there are other options. This guy is a $750 1911, or at least it was when you could still get them. The Arctic Lightweight is discontinued now, but when they were available, $750 got you a more modernized gun. But for the traditionalists out there, it's hard to go wrong with an original style 70 series Colt 1911. If you own one, let me know how well they shoot for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Comments, all that stuff. Don't forget to get subscribed. And come back for the next one where I'll talk to you later.